I'm speaking with a uh, composer Adam Peters, who just completed the score for Savages, uh, the new film from Oliver Stone. Um, but thank you so much for talking with me today. Oh, thank you. Nice to, nice to be here. Um, I guess to start, how did you find music? And what led you to composing for films and other visual mediums? What was the draw for you? Um, what, how, did I, how did I find music in general? Mm -hmm. And what led you to films? Like oh, that, that little niche. Um, <laughs> Well, I, I, I've, I've always sort of seen pictures when I listen to music, I mean, even when I was little, and I used to lie on, sort of lie on the floor with the, you know, speakers next to my ears, and so music's always, um, and when I write music, I've always sort of seen all these levels and colours and stuff in it. So um, I was classically trained, but then I, I played in bands for a long time, and. Um, then I just sort of, I always knew that I wanted to compose in this, in the outside of band world. And I wanted to get back to sort of almost cla modern classical composition. And it seemed, it just all these things started happening that it just seemed to be like calling me to, to start writing for films. I, I'd have people sort of ask me to do bits and pieces, but I was in this other place and sort of other world somehow. So I would do a bit of a thing for a small movie or a TV series or something like that. But I, I just, the feeling just got stronger and stronger that I should, um, this was what I wanted to do. So I, I, I followed that and I eventually, I, I just moved to, uh, I moved to Los Angeles because I knew that was where it would, where everything is. And, um, I didn't know anyone here, but it just felt like the right thing to do. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how I I started. <laughs> and uh, and I mean, just last year you worked on Rango with, with Hans, and uh, which was mm. one of my favorite films and scores of the year. It seemed like that was a very uh, collaborative effort with the yeah. It was. What was that experience like? Oh, it was very um, it was very intense and. It was, um, I learned a lot from working on that film. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was really good to work with hands um, closely and sort of be part of that very big process. Because that, that was a very big, you know, production. Right, yeah. It was a very sort of demanding director. And it was very... Um, very choreographed the music every every moment was was choreographed um, in a in a great way and it confirmed a lot of my suspicions that there's some really great people here in Hollywood. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> um, but now for Savages, you're working with Oliver Stone, who's one of the most respected directors in the industry. Uh, how did you get involved with with this project? Um, Oliver, I, I had read the book. I knew I had met Oliver. Um, I'd done some bits and pieces for him when I first arrived in LA. Mm -hmm. He was actually one of the first people that I met. Oh, wow. Uh, and um, I really like Oliver. He's cool. And I, I, I kind of get him. Mm -hmm. It's not a giant step from the world I used to live in before because he's, a, he's a, just a really creative vigorous person and um, I had I read I'd read Don Winslow's book Savages and um, and and then I knew I somebody told me oh yeah Oliver's you know turned this into a movie and I was like this I, I really could see a lot of possibilities mm -hmm. so I just went I called him and I went to see him and I, I said I I really I really have this gut feeling that I know how this could be, and uh, Oliver just was kind of went with it. He was like, "Okay, really, all right. <laughs> Tell me what you think." And I told him what I th thought, and then he started talking to me about his vision for the film, um, what he felt the story, you know, what, just where he was at with it all, and. Um, we spoke about atmospheres and 
stuff and all sorts of stuff. And I went actually I left that meeting and I just went off and wrote a bunch of music. Um sort of trying to sort of just stay in the place I'd been when Oliver and I were talking. Mm -hmm. Then when when you when you're sort of composing in an early stage of something, you, you, you kind of have to create a place you can go to in your head um, where that thing you're writing is going to live. It's like, I, th I think if you're just wide open and you have nothing, then you have no walls to push against, you have no focus. So I sort of focused on what that conversation had been and um, started to write and just things started to grow in that place and I wrote for a few weeks like that and mm -hmm. then they started shooting and I would occasionally pop down to the set and when they started editing um, you know we just sort of they started putting bits and pieces of what I've been writing together with the with the footage and it, it started to take on a, a life right. so it's a very sort of long quite organic process um, yeah that was kind of, that's kind of how it began and uh, Oliver he, he's known for uh, using a lot of songs a lot of source music and um, <laughs> Was that a challenge to kind of create your create your score within that no, it, world? It was. It was. It was definitely. I knew that. Yeah, Oliver likes that sort of postmodernism, mm -hmm. um, and I actually wanted to bring out a classic side to 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 this. Um, so I actually wrote in a few styles. So that when those different styles came together, we'd have that collage mm -hmm. that uh, really loves, um, and the different colours that keep pushing it and keeps moving everything forward. Right. But I would write in different styles so that um, those styles could all be incorporated as part of the score. Because mm -hmm. I, I actually think Oliver, for Oliver is a classicist. Right. Uh, Oliver loves some you know some deeply great old classic films and we would talk about some of those themes in that um and i just sort of i never really spoke to anyone about it i didn't say this is what my plan is but i just thought well that's that would be a good way of kind of giving the the film a whole even though whole w h mm. <laughs> <laughs> not gaping gap <laughs> but um yeah so i I, you know, I, I used a lot of different sound, you know, not sound, I, I mean, I actually wrote in different styles, so that when they all came together, and then obviously, you know, for certain moments, there, there are licensed tracks, which, you know, they, Oliver and the editors were put in, and those would be, you know, those sounded great, I thought, when they came in, so uh, I think the whole film works in that, it's sort of, it, it's invisible, which is kind of what I wanted it to be. I, I didn't want the score to be jumping out and say, "Right, and, you know, you know, I'm really his piece of music." <laughs> to listen to me. I, I always was trying to push it, push everything forward, but you know, not not put my head, you know, right up at the top. And that's kind of how how we did it. So it does have this sort of you can't quite tell what score and what's. True. Yeah. I, I, when I when I saw the film, that's how I was feeling. I was like, I definitely got a hold of your your romance theme, yeah, and I, which I really loved. And then how you kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of, it kind of got scraped away as the movie went along, and you kind yeah. of, you kind of heard echoes of it. So what, yeah. what what did you want to do? What was the goal with with that? And how did you want to keep that theme throughout well, the picture? I, I mean, I. Let me think. Well, I wanted to. I mean, it's going back to that classic thing that I was talking about earlier. So I, I wanted to keep. I just wanted the film to have this sort of classic structure, and Oliver's very strong on structure, um, and he has this ferociously intelligent brain that can see patterns and feel patterns, like a, a web, and. Um, 
he sees lines in things. Mm -hmm. and, um, so it was just a question of, it was really a question of threading that theme, starting the theme in this sort of, presenting it in this idyllic format with this um, sort of beach guitar sound. Yeah, yeah. And then the theme morphing, and it's, it's, it's barely a theme. I mean, I wrote a few beautiful, long themes, and Oliver and I loved them, that they were amazing, but they just were too, too long for the film. Mm -hmm. they, they were too broad. So we kept coming back to this little, little melody that just had all sorts of qualities to it. And um, so, yeah, it's, it started like that, then I mutate it into, into just a sort of synth and a, a piano, and then I would mutate it into a, a, a sort of ambient texture almost. Right. Um, and all, all sorts of things. Then I had a secondary theme that had this sort of semitone rub in it that was more of the sort of dark cloud of the, the cartel coming up the border. Um, and so thematically, the notes were really simple. But I think the color was, was, is really sort of what it was. I mean, but the, th the notes of that theme definitely had a yearning quality to them. Mm -hmm. um, is that a word I can use? Yearning? I mean, I, 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 I felt it as, as, as the movie but went along, you, you get these was, little, little reminders. Was, the, films, the films are drug film as well. And I wanted the film, I wanted the music to have this feeling like it was stoned, mm -hmm. but not in this sort of cartoon, hey, here's what drug music sounds like, right. you know, sort of a few Indian beats and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I wanted that feeling that I, when I listened, when I wrote it, I wanted to be transported into this world. Um, so I, I felt I had to do that in a quite honest way because to me, if if you're in some kind of heightened state, the last thing you want to hear is something <laughs> that sort of doesn't really get there. It's like, oh my god, <laughs> that music's just horrible. <laughs> so um, I kind of wanted that feeling as well. I didn't want to say, hey, here's the, here's the drug thing. I, I just wanted it to envelop you right. in in that way. And uh, I mean, it it, and it it very much does, and I loved how it, as it went along, and the deeper you went, you still kind of had a little thing you could grasp onto and remind you of that time in the beginning of the film where everything was perfect and and nice, and uh, and the film it's the film is very kind of hyper stylized too. Mm -hmm. um, when you were writing, and I guess you were mentioning, so did you start writing before? Well, just from the script, you kind of started getting. No, ideas. I st I'm not good with scripts. Because, I, I mean, I'm much better with conversations mm -hmm. when I talk to people on a creative level and we can talk about, in vague, I, I read a script and I'm like, I don't know, you know, <laughs> what's he going to look, I don't know what it's going to I, I, yeah. I just, it's a daunting thing as a composer for somebody to hand you a script and say, here, write some stuff for this, because, God, it could, you know, I don't know how they're going to film it, I don't know how the actors are delivering the lines, a lot, one line on a bit of, one piece of pa you know a line on a bit of piece of paper it doesn't might not mean anything to you but as soon as you see it how it was delivered you suddenly go well hang on that's it that's the most important bit of the whole film and it was there at the bottom of page 57 you know i don't know <laughs> so it's like yeah i, I write off uh, i'll put things on the wall i might put a picture of something on the wall and just have that and um for this, I actually had a uh, a picture from A Fistful of Dollars, a picture of Stravinsky. I think I had a picture of Laguna Beach mm -hmm. and a photo of Blake Lively getting into a car. And um, I think that was it. Wow. And you, you, know, you mentioned Fistful of Dollars. I'm, Leone is my favorite director, so I, I love when that end uh, piece it's came. incredible. It's <laughs> so... That's it, isn't it? Yeah. And so, what, was that always the intention to reference Ennio a little bit at the end there, when it became kind of a, a, a modern Western? Yeah, I think, I mean, it wasn't my intention to reference Ennio, it, it, but, I mean, it just kind of happened. Yeah. 
that you know, I think that's kind of what happens when Europeans write <laughs> westerns. <Yeah. laughs> I was saying this. I said this. To, I, I sort of realized it the other day. It's sort of a, a bit of the church comes out somehow. <laughs> But it, it is, you know, we have this sort of, it, and and the film is uh, does have that. It is a western, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of a classic film. It's like the good guys, the bad guys, the heroine on the train tracks. Yeah, I mean, it's just shootouts, and, you know. I love. It. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I mean, that's what film should be. It's uh, it's like it's <laughs> fun. It's it's it's. I really like that. I think that's kind of very very cool uh, that Oliver did that. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's funny. It's like a daylight thriller, isn't it? It's yeah, nice. yeah. It's uh, it was it was very intense too. I mean, the just the sound the sound editing, working with the music and the and mm. and all of it as a whole experience. I found me and my friend we were seeing it. You know, you jolt from certain from yeah. aspects of it. Um, I had a great music editor on this. He was brilliant. Mm -hmm. His name's Carl Carl Kala, and he was, you know, he was my. We worked very closely on this, and also Oliver's editorial team were, were great with me as well. You know, we and it really helped that I'm. We all happened to be. They were just around the corner, so I could go and see them and just have a look at stuff and chat. And it, I, I developed a, a good enough relationship that I with with Carl, my editor, and them that I could play them stuff that I wasn't quite sure about. Without worry of, you know, people going, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> so it's okay. It's okay to fail, you know. Right. As long as you, but you got to have the trust. You got to be in this sort of. And that's, I think, that, yeah, to be able to trust each other and. Yeah, just, so it was good. It's a good working I'm collaboration. Not so love each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of of uh, friendly arguments and compromising, but. <laughs> Not many arguments, actually. More, you know, the, I mean, there'll be a sort of decision-making process. Right, but right. No arguments. And, you know, there'll be certain things that I would feel quite strongly that someone else would feel quite strongly the other way. And you just kind of... I don't remember any arguments. I, I, don't, think Oliver, I don't think Oliver shouted at me. I think he shouted at me once, but I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what the fuck's this? Turn him out. Just turn him out. Everyone's like, he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, very cool. Um, I guess to, to wrap it up, I always like to ask composers if, uh, if you had the chance to score any film ever made with no disrespect to the original composer, which film would you choose? Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Battle of Britain, and I'd do it exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pro I was thinking that the other day. It was like um, I remember I, I read somewhere that Wagner did. Wagner um, actually wrote wrote out all of Beethoven's symphonies mm. to to sort of. And I, I was thinking that I understand that. That's a that's a, that's a more interesting thing to do. I think actually to if there's something that you really love to to um, to learn about it. So. You know, maybe that's something, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I do love that film. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I mean, I, I mean, I, th I always think it's a lot, yeah, a lot of composers. They say, oh, "I would never touch anything," but a lot of they're like, "Oh yeah, I would, I would like to do you know, Giant or, or Lawrence of Arabia." You know, just different playgrounds to play in. And I was listening to Lawrence of Arabia yesterday, man. That I mean, that's amazing. I know Maurice. Ah, yeah. it's, uh, it's just it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. No, God, I'd run a mile if someone put that anywhere near me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd prefer to take some crappy no. TV show <laughs> and write a symphony for it. <laughs> so people are like, what? <laughs> well, um, uh, Adam, thank you so much for your time. It was very lovely to chat with you. Um, hopefully we get to do it again sometime. Yeah, see you again. All right. And uh, good luck and everything. And I really, I, I did really love the music and how it worked. And, and Great. Savages, just the way it progressed and flowed. It was fantastic. Thank you. Well, it means we, we did what we tried to, to do. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> and it worked. <laughs>